From across the Tasman she came to steal not only a national treasure, but the hearts of Australia as well. All set for the cup. Gates crash back. And they're off and racing to an almighty roar. For many, it was three minutes of emotion that united our nation like no other. Give the slip in front. Four lengths to the mere ethereal giving chase. Then Persian punch. Further back to May the horse. For a chosen few, it was the journey of a lifetime. The leader give the slip. Ethereal's coming home. Flemington. Ethereal and Scott Cena have beaten Give the Slip. It was the week that became the celebration of a nation as the pursuit of the Golden Chalice reached new heights. From the Dairy in the Derby. From the Zarek, the leader is Amalfi. Zarek trying to come back. Amalfi and Zarek. Zarek's kicking back on the inside of Amalfi. To the splendor of Ladies' Day. Cheers! Cheers! Flemington in the first week of November is pure magic. to the 2001 Melbourne Cup Carnival, live and exclusive to Network 10. Well, another Melbourne Cup Carnival is drawing to a close, and what a week it's been. We saw history when Sheila Laxon became the first woman to train the winner of the Melbourne Cup. We saw record crowds again as punters and partygoers flocked to Flemington. We saw another week of glamour and colour, the best fashions you will see probably anywhere in the world. We saw famous faces, we'll see a few more today, and we cheered on Australia's newest millionaire. And it all happened right here at Flemington. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Webster. Welcome to the final day of the Melbourne Cup Carnival, the feature race, the Emirates Stakes. This is family day, a lot of fun for mums, dads and the kids, but also a great day of racing. The Emirates Stakes for the best milers in the land and of course for those horses that didn't quite make it to the barrier for the Melbourne Cup, the Queen Elizabeth over 2,500 metres. So it's a beauty. Final day, Melbourne Cup Carnival. You sit back, relax and let us entertain you. Tell you one thing else we have to do. And that's pick you some winners. Here's the team of gurus, headed by Peter Donegan. Good morning to you. Good morning, Tim Webster. Good morning, everyone. Yes, the final day is upon us, and we are going to try and pick you some winners on Emirates Stakes Day. And joining me to do just that, my illustrious panel, the three of them back together again for the last day, Jenny Chapman, Simon Marshall, John Letts. Good morning to you. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Pete. You could do it in unison if you like. We we've, did, we tried. We've only been doing this for we four days. We actually tried it in unison. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, Jen. Yes. The Emirates Stakes, every year we come here and we talk about what a hard race it is, and this year's no exception. Oh, no easier at all, Pete, that's for sure. Um, you could probably have about 10 or 12 picks in the race and still be wrong. Simon, we saw Magical Miss in our opener winning the Oaks Stakes the other day, the Crown Oaks. I think we might be seeing her in 12 months' time too. Yeah, I think Bart will now uh, navigate a wait for age program for her. She's something special to win by five links in the Oaks. And uh, I think we found a new Caulfield Melbourne Cup's early favourite, Pete. And John, that's one of the other features today is, of course, the Emirates Legends Race. You rode in it last year and have been banned from riding in it this year because you gave everyone an earache on the way to the barrier. They uh, suffered a lot of interference in the race, Pete. Did they? So they've made me a steward this year, actually. So you're going to be up there on I'll Banjo, there. having a bit of a chat to the boys, and it's a great feature of the uh, racing today. It is. It's fabulous. And yesterday we had a function out here and just mm. met all the guys again, and it's fabulous. And I mean, Lester Piggott is just a wizard. He, he just amazes me. How he, he turned 66 on Monday. Yeah. And it was well, fabulous. I was going to ask, John, who is the eldest jockey in the race? Lester. Lester is 66. Okay. But he's just... It's a good effort, yeah. isn't it? Oh, look, he's, he's just a wonderful guy, and he's been great for racing. And, yeah. and I would say the greatest in the world, Simon. Still doing his form for races like this, too. He wants to know who he's riding against yeah. and the form of the other horses. He's he rides track work every morning he's here and, and just mm. finds out the best ones. And yeah. speaking of 66, too, it was Scobie Breezley's 66th wedding anniversary on Monday as well, too. So 
Right. Congratulations to Scobie, larger than life. Very like proud that. of it too, Pete. He yes. was very, very proud of it because he said, I think I spoke to you in the car coming out, he said, 66 years to stay married is a long time for a jockey. I said, they don't live that long usually, <laughs> Scobie. They're a very proud family. <laughs> they are. Uh, yeah. Exactly right. Lovely man. Okay, the weather today, let's have a look at what's going to happen out here at Flemington. Uh, doesn't look too promising, although it's very pleasant at the moment. Partly cloudy with showery periods, rather cold, fresh west to southwesterly winds, and we're looking for a maximum temperature of 17 degrees. Jen's got the waterproof mascara on just in case. Yes, we've you? had one of those stakes days before, haven't we, Pete? Yeah, we have. The rail's out seven metres. Track is good at the moment. Possible showers, as we said. The penetrometer, 3.72 overall, 3.76 the inside, 3.62 the outside. They'll be getting to the outside in all of the races today, but especially the uh, straight races, they will be looking to get out there a little bit later in the day. Why don't we scratch some horses? We better do that. That's rather important. OK, you lead them off, Jim, with the Tui's new sprint, race one at 11.20. OK, in race one, take out number five, Stuttgart, and number 13, Mouthwash. Stuttgart. 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 Sorry. Uh, race two is clear. So, Simon, what about the third race on the card? Race three, as you can see, take numbers 11, 18 and 19. That's La Zofany, Call Me Lily and Shelley's Magic. What about the fourth, Jonathan? Uh, end of the fourth, Pete, we take out number nine, which is Bouverie's Jest. Race five on the card is the Hilton on the Park Sprint. Jen, the yes. scratchings? take out number six, Schubert, and number 13, Ulrico. And the big one is the Emirates Stakes, race six at 2.45. Simon, a very important scratching, number one here. Yeah, number one, show a heart. Thought he was a great chance too, Pete, but he's out from number 11. Also, Market Price was a winner here on Saturday. She's out the 11 and also the 19, super impressive. Seventh event is the Village Roadshow Welter, Jonathan. Yes, Pete, we take out IMAX here, number 11. He comes out, won't be with us. Number 15, Rainbows for me. Uh, number 18, Rainbows for me. And number 19, Ringleader. So 11, 18 and 19. Then we move on to the other of the features today. Jen, the Queen Elizabeth Stakes. Yes, take out the top weight, number one, Magneto. Then take out number 12, um, Matriculate. Number 13, Indian Ridge. 18, Our Le Bleu. And number 19, Teddy Bear. And from the final event, the Network 10 welter. Simon? Just the one there, Pete. Number 14, Siri Nell. OK, so there are the scratchings for the last day of the Melbourne Cup Carnival. Here are the totes for the big one. Let's have a look at them. Crawl and High coming up about the best of those. Lazagalit, Letter and Weasel will definitely in contention. But, Jen, it's going to be one of those races where it's going to be, I reckon, probably 6 or $7 the field when they jump. Oh, without a doubt, Pete. I think they're higher, $8.70 there on Super Tab. Oh, there's a mission. OK, well, $4.20. These unders, isn't mm. he? Well, probably, I mean, he's, a, he's definitely got a chance. Oh, he's definitely got a chance, but is he a three-to-one chance in that field? Well, probably not. I wouldn't have thought so. Might be the Oliver factor there creeping in a bit. He could win on a rocking horse at the moment, couldn't he? I've made him my best roughing. And his favourite. <laughs> <laughs> and his favourite. Well, I think you might have to change that then. I think I might have to, Pete. Yeah, well, uh, come to the tips a little bit later on. Let's have a look at the totes for the first. It's at 11.20 this morning. And uh, as I said, it is the Tui's new sprint over 1,100 metres. Here are the totes for race one. Let's see what the punters have made of it. End zone is my selection in the race. It's come up the favourite. What did you think, Jen? Well, I like number 11, key reversal, Pete. I had the one start in from a spell, and uh, I thought it was a good effort to run second at Big Victoria Park. Um, going to be very hard to beat in the race. OK, over the page we've got key reversal number 11 at round about the $9 mark. So you can see it's a wide open betting race here. End zone coming up the favourite, but plenty of chances. And par four now that it's got to start is also amongst the uh, likely chances here for the first at $10.50. And there are the selections. You've gone for Devlin's Bridge number eight, Simon? Yeah, he's yet to, yet to run a bad race this horse, Pete. He won well at Cheltenham in Adelaide last start, coming over for the David Hall stable. Uh, I thought he was very well placed, Vincent Hall from Barrier 8. Going to get a gun run. He's been uh, a little bit unlucky on the provincial circuit, but with his win at Cheltenham last start, just, can, just think this horse will go forward today at Flemington. Yeah, number six it is, Devlin's Bridge, and uh, let's see, is like Jen with key reversal here in the first race. Well, let's find out if there has been any early speculating on the Emirates Stakes a little bit later on, and particularly what is going on in the first event. We're lucky to have him here today. <laughs> He, uh, he was nearly a faller yesterday. Tim Gossage, what happened to you? Oh, I just walked into a door, Pete, which was made of glass, and I didn't know it was there, and uh, put up a bit sore, but thanks to the makeup artist who got me through OK, but I am sporting some bruises and a few minor cuts, but I'm OK, Pete. It's good to be here. Well, Bookie's cleaned up on Derby Day, but, of course, they... Uh, 
didn't on Cup Day in Oaks Day. It was a punter's day, no doubt about that. Admission has opened up a $4 pop for the Emirates. So it is the favourite, similar to the price on the tote. The first race, the uh, par four, and also, of course, Devlin's Bridge. The David Hall train pair have opened up almost uh, equal favourites in this first race, I can tell you that. And a straw poll of all the bookies here, Pete, have uh, John Howard a slight odds-on favourite to win the Prime Minister's stakes. All right, thank you, Tim. And uh, the best of luck to you. And let's hope you can inflict some of that concussion that you're suffering on those bookmakers down there today. It's going to be a tough fight back, Pete. <laughs> Good luck. Well, the trophy for the big race today, it's a magnificent trophy. It's a very unique trophy for the Emirates Stakes. Quite often you see the cups and the plates, but there it is. Uh, the sword and the scabbard that will go to the connections of the winner of the Emirates Stakes, the big one today. We're off and running on our final day of the carnival. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the runners in the first event on the program. It's family day out here at Flemington, and we hope you enjoy Network 10's coverage throughout Australia, right throughout the day. She... There's going to be plenty of the youngsters here today, maybe enjoying their first day at the races and maybe they'll be like me. When I spent the first day at the races as a young fella, I just couldn't wait to come back and I've been coming back ever since, especially to this great carnival, Melbourne Cup Carnival, and you're watching it around Australia on Network 10. Well, the first is getting ever closer. 11.20 is the starting time. Jen, why don't we have a look at some of the main chances here for the first? And we'll lead them off with number two, and that's Price of Love. Damien Oliver is the rider, drawn barrier one, so... It's probably on the wrong side of the track. Uh, well, you, you would expect that, Peter, um, the way it has been racing. Uh, this horse has got the tongue tie off. She is a very fast type of mare. Uh, she's nice and relaxed there in the mounting yard. I think she's probably going to need some luck from that barrier, but the track does suit her. She's a dry tracker. Number six is Devlin's Bridge, and the rider here is Vincent Hall for David uh, Hall here at Flemington. This horse is very honest, Pete. He's done nothing wrong at all. Um, trained on the track here at Flemington. Sometimes does help uh, these sorts of horses here as well, especially down the straight. So there with a chance for sure. Yeah, it looks particularly well in the mounting yard. Number seven is end zone, the one I've gone for. Brendan Fennick takes the ride here for Alan Weymouth. Uh, yes, this horse hasn't raced since the 11th of August, but has won a trial at Cranbourne. A horse that generally does like a little bit of give in the ground. Um, Barry 16 will help it, though, and his form fresh is good. So he's going into this fresh, he's a chance. Yeah, good first up and good down the straight. Number eight, Chardonnay and Ice has drawn the right side of the track. Robert Smurden is the trainer, and Zach Purton is the rider. And maybe Robert might do what he did with the first race on Melbourne Cup Day. Yes, that would be nice for him. Um, this horse, Pete, uh, a few good runs. I didn't mind a few of her runs earlier on in this preparation then there was a couple of very disappointing ones but on Saturday she really uh, sorry Tuesday she she actually went all right so I've given her a chance again from barrier 18. Number nine is Flashline Noel Callow is the rider here 58 kilos I think tested him last start at Seymour gets in quite nicely with 54 and a half um, there was a good run four starts ago at Flemington when he did run second there. And if he lives up to that, he's probably an each way chance. The one that I was tossing up between end zone and key reversal. Key reversal, your selection in the race number 11, Darren Gauchy for John Hawkes. Yes, I thought it was a nice first up effort from him at Victoria Park. He's going into this race a fitter horse. And if you look at his last run at Victoria Park, Heracles ran fifth to Ruthless Tycoon on Tuesday. And that form has been very good. Number 15, Satashi. There's a bit of a tip floating around for this one. Again, on the right side of the track being drawn in gate number 15, Andrew Findlay is the rider for Alan Bailey. Yes, having his first start for Alan Bailey here, and he is fresh. I think he's probably a, a good chance in the race because of his consistency record, Pete. It's pretty good. And down the bottom, number 17, par 4, Brett Preble rides for David Hall. Now, this horse was very impressive at Geelong, Jen, but then went very poorly at Caulfield. Mm, terrible run at Caulfield, but uh, there's been big wraps on this horse, Pete, and uh, once again trained on the track by David Hall, uh, four-year-old four year mare. Um, she looks terrific. I think she's in there with some chance. If maybe she choked down or something went wrong, she might have had just a day off, you know. The rider for number 18, Land Rulers, Greg Childs, here in the first. What did you go for, Jen? Well, I'm going with number 11, Key Reversal, to win from number 6, Devlin's Bridge, and number 15, Satashi Fresh. Dan, what about the...